Hi everyone, my name is Corey Washington. I am recording this for my special topics in sports class from St. Thomas University um, for May 5th, 2019. And my presentation is a, is called She's Got Game and it is about the evolution and history of Title IX. In this presentation, we will go over a couple different things from influential people in Title IX to influential cases as well as what Title IX actually is and how it pertains to sports. So, some things to think about with Title IX. Title IX is considered to be one of the biggest moves in education. When it was signed in 1972, it it was unknown how it would really impact athletics and impact, uh, you know, athletics in all different levels. Um, the movement itself is not only in reference massive due to what it did to education, but definitely what it did to sports and what it did to athletic administration and what it's continuing to do. These days we have women that are athletic directors, head coaches for professional teams um, in certain places, in certain leagues, head co assistant coaches in male professional leagues, such as the NBA, female referees in the NFL, and it's just amazing to see what Title IX has done for sports and the people who have helped push and the events who have helped push this movement. So what exactly is Title IX? Title IX was passed in 1972 and then amended again in 1975. And it's a law that protects against sexual discrimination in athletes as in other aspects of education. Basically, it just helps us, helps athletics at all levels to ensure that female athletes are getting everything they need to be an athlete, whether it's the funding or the equipment or the opportunity. There have been a lot of positives in enacting Title IX, from an increase in athletic opportunities for women, such as jobs, but also in them having places to play. It also, <clears throat> excuse me, it also has had an impact on, you know, their physical, because it decreases the being athlete, um, Active it itself has a positive impact on, on any type of athlete, but on women, it's decreased the risk of different cancers and osteoporosis. It's also increased confidence and self-esteem, which is major in regards to mental health and has also encouraged female athletes to get higher grades and lower their dropout and pregnancy rate. Some different challenges that come from Title IX is the just initial reaction to women playing sports in general. It's deemed unattractive and manly and, you know, women should only be in the kitchen cooking and cleaning in some aspects. There's also the idea behind women being too emotional and not being emotionally ready to be into athletics, whether it's as an athletic director. Some concerns have come from people believing that women will solely focus on starting a family and wanting to be more maternal, and that will also hurt athletics. Some other thoughts are the idea behind, you know, trying to have women be the coaches of female teams. There are still a lot of males who coach female teams, and there's also still a lot of uh, female college presidents and not a lot of female athletic directors, which is something that in recent years I have seen increase um, in certain capacities myself, but um, also... The original purpose of Title IX was to stop discrimination in education. I still don't believe that they, when they wrote the, when the Title IX was written, the impact that it would have on sports. I don't think anybody was ready for what it could have done to sports. So some different historical moments, some things that um, definitely helped to push Title IX were the Battle of the Sexes, which was won by Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King was a tennis star who beat Bobby Riggs in the famous Battle of the Sexes match at in the Astrodome. When she won that, um, when she won that match, she also just solidified herself as a huge voice in pushing Title IX. She became an advocate for women's rights in sports and founded the Women's Tennis Association as well as the Women's Sports Foundation. The All-American Girls Professional League, which holds a special place in my heart because it is the inspiration behind one of my favorite movies, A League of Their Own, which starred Tom Hanks and Gina Davis, was a league that was created by Chicago Cubs owner and gum magnet Philip K. Wrigley. And Wrigley created this as sort of a form of entertainment 
because the male baseball players were away fighting in the war and Wrigley did not know how big this league was going to get. From the time that it ran from 1943 to 1954, it included 545 women who were recruited in the United States, Canada, as well as Cuba. So definitely a huge thing for the uh, bells of the ball game. The ooh ooh, boo boo. The next league that came to pass was the WNBA, which was founded by the NBA Board of Governors. They got it approved the concept of having a women's professional basketball league to go with the National Basketball League, which was dominated by men. Since then, the WNBA has been the home of women's basketball and also helped to create other different leagues for women's professional sports, such as professional soccer and different things like that. But also the WA itself has branched off and created other different areas for female basketball to play, such as playing overseas and playing uh, semi-pro just to get, you know, different levels of um, experience. And then the final event was the U.S. Women's National Team World Cup victory over China in 1999, which still to this day is a huge, a monumental event that helped push women's soccer, not only in America, but nationwide. Um, the infamous pictures of Brandi Chastain ripping her jersey off and celebrating and the different big names that came through there that, you know, girls still talk about. That game was huge because it created an environment for female soccer players to want to get to. It gave them a goal. It gave them something to work towards. And in also giving them that goal, there are all throughout the United States itself, there are different avenues that people are taking to play professional with different leagues such as the ECNL League, MPL, DA programs, different types of level of club and recreational soccer for female soccer players to get to that level. Some key players in enacting Title IX, the mother of Title IX, Patsy Mink, um, authored the amendment while she was serving on the U.S. House of Representatives in 1972. The the document was actually renamed in her honor as instead of being called Title IX, it was changed to the Patsy T. Mink Equal Opportunity in Education Act in memory of her when she passed in 2002. The father of Title IX, Birch Bay, was had a very important role in creating t the Title IX legislation and getting it to pass. He also was a very influential in trying to create the Equal Rights Amendment, which all didn't end up passing, but it was aimed to guarantee equality under the Constitution, regardless of gender. So definitely, again, staying focused on Title IX and trying to really get something along that nature passed. The president who helped to ensure that Title IX was passed was Richard Nixon, who signed the document prohibiting discrimination based on any sex in any, based on sex in any educational program that received financial aid. Some of these influential players were former athletes, such as Nancy Lieberman, who played at Old Dominion. I was an All-American. She founded the Women's Sports Foundation and was a president. People such as Olympic medalist Nancy Hogsmeade Maker, who also was a president of the Women's Sports Foundation. Val Ackerman, who wasn't a player, but she was the president of the first president of the WNBA. And Cynthia Cooper, who was a professional basketball player, played for the Houston Comets coach at a Department of Education's Commission on Opportunity Athletics and also was one of the people who studied Title IX in 2002. Some different cases that came up did a couple different things. Some had a negative impact, some had a positive. Uh, the Grove City versus Bell case started out as a negative because it, ruled, it was ruled that programs could, um, you know, discriminate against programs that were receiving funds um, and it didn't cover title nine did not cover education fully cover educational institutions so it covered different programs but it didn't cover athletics so when the civil rights restoration act of 1987 came around it actually nullified the ruling on the grove city case and outlawed sexual discrimination throughout the entire educational institution no matter what type of program it was trying to support the Frank Supreme Court in Franklin versus Gwinnett County case in 1992 saw that victims of sexual discrimination were awarded money in their cases. And then there are cases such as the Howard University case in 1993, 
where coach Sonia Taylor sued because she felt she was not getting the same pay as the men's basketball coach, which also came to light, came to people discussing, um, making sure that both males and females in their different sports were getting paid properly. The future of Title IX, more, you know, where do we go from here? I think going forward, there is a progress in institutions understanding what the law is and what it means, both in the classroom and outside the classroom as well. I think that it creates conversation in trying to implement not only education for men, but also for women and what they need to do to better female athletic programs. It also helps motivate women to apply for those jobs and to participate in those sports. And Bernie Sandler, who was one of the early um, early influences and early voices of Title IX, you know, talks about how she was very naive and thinking that it was just going to take two years for Title IX to make an impact. But it's now up to 5, 10, 15 years, almost, you know, many years later. And there's still questions as to what Title IX is in some cases, but also the impact that it has. So it still continues to make an impact on athletics. The goal is to obviously avoid returning to pre-Title IX days because we don't want to return to those ignorant thoughts of women only being in a kitchen and it being deemed um, just the boys, a thing for the boys. So that definitely goes into educating and discussion the importance of Title IX in all aspects of athletics. Thank you guys for joining me. And I hope this was educational. Let's keep pushing for Title IX and women to continue to take over sports.